Hey there, Sagittarius. Welcome to Divine Conversations and welcome to the month of September of 2022. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. I hope this message, this video, this reading finds you well. So we are going to be looking at the month of September for the sign of Sagittarius from the point of view of true sidereal astrology in this video. Yeah. So keep in mind, guys, with that said, this is a general reading. So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. And also when we are are talking about the placement of the planets in the specific houses, this is really going to be most relevant for Sagittarius rising in the true sidereal system. But that does not mean that this cannot resonate for you if you are a Sagittarius sun, moon, or any other placement. Just understand that when I'm talking about where the planets are in the houses, it's really from the point of view of Sagittarius rising. Now, with that said, we are looking at this again through true sidereal astrology. If you are unfamiliar with true sidereal astrology, you've never experienced it before, then you have found yourself in the right place. I highly recommend that you hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more readings and messages coming through because that's what we're going to be talking about when we talk about astrology here in uh, on this channel. Yeah. If you would like to get a copy of your true sidereal natal chart, please don't hesitate to email me. My email can be found in the description box below. Shoot me a message letting me know you're interested, including your uh, birth information, so your birth date, your time of birth, and your place of birth, and I will be more than happy to send you a copy of your natal chart in the true sidereal system free of charge. I am available for uh, sessions in terms of into uh, analyzing and discussing your chart, uh, go ahead and email me and I would be very, very happy to get you all set up there. And also if you're looking for a reading, just energy reading in terms of tarot and anything like that, oracle cards as well, I'm also available for that. I have a list of the uh, readings that I offer in my description box. Just check that out. Shoot me an email, letting me know you're interested. And again, I would be more than happy to get you all hooked up. And as always, please make sure to like that, uh, smash that like button, hit the subscribe button for me, and also leave me a comment in the comment section down below letting me know how this resonates from you or for you. I love to hear from you guys. All right, Sagittarius, let's get into this. I'm going to be honest with you. It took me some time to really figure out how to focus this reading for you because as I was looking at the chart, nothing was really standing out too much, but spirit guided me to just focus on your ruling planet, which is Jupiter. So that's what we're going to do here. Yeah. So in terms of this month, uh, Jupiter is stationed retrograde right now in the constellation of Pisces, which is a really beautiful aspect. Jupiter really enjoys being in the sign of Pisces. Jupiter is actually one of the ruling planets. Uh, I'm sorry. Yes, ruling planets. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Pisces is one of the signs that Jupiter rules. Yeah. But we're going to look at this for you, Sagittarius. Okay. So Jupiter is retrograde. That's not so big, but it can accentuate the power. I do feel like it's boosting the power of Jupiter's energy for you. Now for this month, Jupiter is making some aspects to Mars, which is moving through through the constellation of Taurus and also is making an opposition with the sun and Venus. Okay. For Sagittarius rising, this, uh, these oppositions with the sun and Venus are moving through. Oh, and also it's making a pretty big opposition with Mercury, which is also another big topic this month as Mercury will be going retrograde starting around the 9th of September, right around the full moon and throughout the month of September into October. Ju uh, Mercury goes direct by the 1st of October. Okay. So the big, the, really the big draw, the big message for you is understanding how this opposition between Jur Jupiter and Mercury are affecting your life. Now, like I was saying for uh, Sagittarius rising, Mercury is moving retrograde from your 10th house into your ninth house. Okay. And Mars is moving through Taurus in your sixth house. Lots of big Virgo energy that is really being accentuated for you during this time because because Mercury is moving through his one of his home signs of Virgo. And also with Mars being in the sixth house, uh, the sixth house is ruled traditionally or overall is, is ruled by Virgo. Okay. So this is really giving you an opportunity to fix some things and heal some things for you. Now, this is really in terms of what's really being healed here is in terms of um, your fourth house, because that's where Jupiter is placed for myself. Sagittarian risers. 
And the first tarot card that's come out for you here is the star, okay? Now, some of this healing may actually be pretty difficult or uh, hard to understand is what Spirit is saying here. But also that extra challenging aspect is really um, upping the ante for you in terms of the amount of healing that you could really be experiencing during this time, okay? So um, for this, I was really feeling like I was, as I was channeling this energy for you, it felt like something that may have kind of gone dead inside or some ways that you may have felt dead inside um, may be able to be reanalyzed and re-understood and really re-judged or re brought back to life, okay? Now pay close attention to how you uh, project yourself or how it is you express yourself in terms of the the collective or the people around you or your community okay um, this is a 10th house energy this could also be representing or resonating with your um, your career focus potentially but really the big draw that I was picking up on here is how it is you present yourself in the world around you because the 10th house energy can um, represent how people see you okay um, because the way that you express and or project yourself in terms of the people around you is directly correlated to how people see you, all right? There is a way that you can heal this element. Um, and if there are ways that you would like to be seen by the collective here um, in better ways, that definitely can be healed and rejudged for you. But that all comes back to the way that you nurture and love yourself. Uh, fourth house energies, where Jupiter is placed for you in terms of a Sagittarius rising okay but it also could translate into uh connecting you into better ways uh, or, or um, i'm sorry connecting you back to things that you truly dream of over this process with mercury going retrograde through through virgo mercury retrograde is I, I like to describe it as a way to really rewrite that programming and with mercury in one of its home signs of virgo okay mercury really is very exalted in virgo this is even though this could be a difficult process for you maybe a little bit hard to understand Ultimately, it could be a really good thing if you really take advantage of this because if you are, well, you are being presented with a way to heal the way that you nurtured and loved yourself, which could be tr directly translated to some negative habits that you have um, uh, incorporated or learned from the way that you were nurtured and loved as a child in your home life. Again, fourth house energies. But the thing, even though this could actually be a really difficult thing for you to work through, what's really helping you here is Mars transiting through Taurus. Mars in Taurus really gives us the tenacity to really, really get down to business, roll up our sleeves and do the dirty work, but not only do the dirty work of really trying to rebuild or reshape something, but Mars in Taurus also, also gives you that tenacity to see it through, to do the hard work and to be consistent with it. For Sagittarius rising, Mars is moving through the sixth house. Again, more Virgo energy because Virgo is the ruler of the sixth house. This is your house of health and wellness, your house of routines, and also how it is you are potentially of service to the, to the collective or the people around you. Now, in the ways that you're able to heal yourself, this could really be translating into ways that you can make money or better ways that you can make money or have some sort of new or re or revamped or revived ways of being of service to the collective um, and also with Virgo being an earth sign right this could also translate into how you make money. So you, in this healing process for you throughout this month, Sagittarius, you could actually discover ways that you could make new ways or better ways that you can make money or make a living for yourself um, in terms of being of service to people. For, for those of you that are already in that service sector, by you learning how to re-love and re-nurture yourself, that could also translate into how you can love and nurture others in a much better way. And this is by through, uh, this is through direct experience with 
transforming that element for yourself. The next card you have here is the Page of Swords, okay, which does translate into Mercury energy. That It's all about learning, okay? It's all about learning this month for you, Sagittarius, learning uh, ways that you can heal and love yourself and then translating that into ways that you can heal and love others in a much better way. The next card you have here is Death. Big, 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 big transformation. Actually, with that death card, I want to look at what's going on in the eighth house for you. The eighth house is ruled by Scorpio. The eighth house is all about death and transformation, and that's coming up for you. For So for some of you, throughout this month, um, depending on your specific... Uh, your your specific chart this could translate more for someone here who has a sagittarius placement maybe sun or moon or maybe something else maybe potentially venus but also um your you may have a different rising sign than sagittarius in terms of eighth house energies that could be activated for you so with all of that said let's just get into the chart here so what you see in front of you is the eighth house. Oh, I'm sorry, is your chart for Sagittarius rising starting on September 1st. And right here, look at here. Um, my intuition was correct. There is something going on with the eighth house. For Sagittarius rising, you have Venus in your eighth, or at least transiting through your eighth house. And Venus is another one of those planets that Jupiter is going to be making an opposition with. Um, but that's going to be later in the month. And later in the month, let's just fast forward to that real quick. Later Later in the month, that opposition is going to happen between Jupiter and Venus, um, and this is actually right here. This is the f the new moon on September 25th, which again is going to be in the constellation of Virgo. And in this moment, not only is there an opposition between Jupiter and Venus, but there's also an opposition between the sun and, well, the new moon really, with the sun and the moon being in conjunction, and also with um with Mercury, okay? So later on in the month, you are going to have a, a time to really have a face-off between uh, Venus and Mercury and the sun and also the moon. Now, the moon, new moon is a really great time to hit that reset button, to clear the space and create a new atmosphere for something new to grow. And the big message or the big element that I was picking up on for the collective in terms of this new moon on September 25th in the sign of Virgo, an earth sign, okay, with with um, uh, this being a stellium type of energy between the sun, the moon, Mercury, and Venus, who are all going to be in Virgo at the time of this new moon, Venus being involved here feels like for the collective, Venus is bringing forward a sense of fertilizer for your new space to grow something new. So Venus is transiting from your eighth house into your ninth house, Sagittarius rising, all through the sign of Leo. Leo is the sign of your inner child, your children, and uh, your sense of self-expression. How it is you express yourself coming out of the fourth house, which laid or was at least supposed to lay a foundation of love and nurturance, okay? So in ways that you are learning to re-nurture yourself and thus re-express yourself, by the time we reach the new moon, there is some sort of opposition, or I'm sorry, some sort of face-off that's happening. I feel like the new moon is providing you with a moment to say, to sit back and say, okay, what have I learned here? right? How have I learned to re-love myself? How have I learned to re-nurture myself? And how can I further express myself from this new foundation of love and nurturance? Pay very close attention to that energy because whatever it is you, however it is you've healed and whatever it is you've learned here, the star with the page of swords, that is ultimately going to translate into a beautiful form of transformation for you that can really, really help you move forward, whether this is in just the way that you present yourself to the collective or even a new career path for you that you really were able to put the real effort into understanding. Eight of Pentacles. Again, Sagittarius, there is a really a message of putting in the effort. And this really could be a difficult time for you, or this could be something difficult to difficult for you to understand, maybe initially. But again, looky here, Mars is in is transiting through Taurus, which is giving you that tenacity, which is giving you that follow through to really learn and analyze and dissect how it is you can heal, how it is you can reshape yourself, okay? 
all right, to go through that transformation, really pull on that Mars in Taurus, translate, transiting through your sixth house for Sagittarius rising to give you that follow through, to give you that tenacity, to give you that sense of taking it step by step and doing the consistent work, eight of pentacles, consistency to really learn about this. Okay. Now, the next thing that I want to focus on that I'm bringing my attention is being brought to is this star energy with uh, which is this uh, which um, represents Aquarius. And with that, we're going to take a little bit of a few steps backward to the full moon. Now, for the collective, the full moon is in fact going to be in Aquarius on the uh, that's very interesting. Uh, I'm sorry, I I'm getting distracted, um, is going to be in Aquarius, uh, uh, in, for you, Sagittarius rising, this is the third house, okay? Now, the new, the, the full moon is going to be late in the, in the late hours, the evening hours, or the overnight hours of September 9th into the early hours of September 10th. This is when that full moon is really going to be exact and be its strongest. At the same time, Sagittarius, Mercury is starting his retrograde motion through Sagitt I'm sorry, through uh, Virgo. This kicks off on the 9th of September. Now, another big message for the collective in terms of the full moon here is the Aquarius draw or the Aquarius energy. Um, this is kind of, I've been feeling like this is re directly related to what, what, what transpired for you or how it is you were able to reset your energies th through the a previous new moon on August 27th that happened in Leo. The, the, the big message for the new moon on August 27th for the collective in the constellation of Leo is getting reconnected in how, in, in reconnected to ways that you want to reshape your sense of personal expression, okay? Whatever kicked off for you during that new moon on August 27th in the constellation of Leo can then be translated or brought out into the collective for during the energies of the full moon on September 9th and 10th, okay? And the uh, and the big thing that I'm feeling here is however it is that you want to reach out or branch out or connect with new people or maybe find some guru gurus, some healers, some teachers to help really move you forward in this new path, the full moon in Aquarius is a really excellent time for you to reach out, for you to branch out. And ironically enough for you, Sagittarius, at least Sagittarius rising, that full moon is happening in the third house ruled by Gemini and is a house of communication, commerce, branching out, communicating with new people, meeting new people, expressing your ideas and bouncing that off of new people. Okay. So that's a really excellent energy for you, a really excellent time for you to branch out and really get the ball rolling. Ooh, we have a card. We have a card that's come out, that's fallen out. Bam, there you go. The Fool. Really use the energy of the new moon to get you started, to break that ground, to get you moving in this new sense, in this new way, in this new direction. And again, I'm really feeling the encouragement of Mars moving through Taurus to give you the tenacity and give you the follow through to really make this happen. And also with that full moon energy, it being in the sign or constellation of Aquarius and um, uh, in the constellation of Aquarius and Aquarius being the ruler of the 11th house. This again uh, is infusing you with a great deal of power to move forward towards your dreams. Now your dreams, your hopes, and your wishes may really be surrounded by re-loving and learning how to reparent and re-nurture yourself ultimately with this fourth house energy being the being a big uh, uh, focal point for you again Sagittarius rising Jupiter being in that fourth house but it could translate for anyone but also later on down the road like I was saying this could translate into a new career path for you okay but don't focus so much on that if that is an element for you if that is something yeah let see look at that there's the tenth house energies or that ten of pentacle energies or the long-term goal what spirit is saying here with this ten 
10 of pentacles here is focus on the healing first. Focus, focus on how you can transform first, okay? And then later on down the road, once you have that under your belt or once you're on, you've got that a strongly, strongly underway, then all of a sudden I feel like the inspiration or the understanding towards a new um, collective goal or a new uh, career goal could come to mind. But really, Sagittarius, this is a long-term situation for you. You've got to be in it for the long haul, okay? So focus on the healing first because that's going to set you up on the right path. And then also in terms of that long-term energies, if you're already feeling daunted by that just by hearing it, again, draw on the energies of the of, um of Mars being in Taurus to really give you that tenacity and really give you that follow through. Yeah. All right, Sagittarius, that's what I've got for you. Let's see what I can get in terms of a closing message. Closing message for Sagittarius, please, for the month of September. The Page of Cups did just flash itself, okay? It didn't come out completely, but uh, the new, okay? Your dreams and desires, reparenting yourself, that inner child energy. Really focus on reparenting yourself this month, okay? And finally, bam, the Wheel of Fortune. Jupiter energy, Sagittarius, this is really big for you. This is really excellent for you. This could really be really, oh my God, this is so lucky for you. There is so much potential here for you, okay? Really, really focus on this. Really allow yourselves to dive into this energy to really change the landscape for you, to change the energies. Next card that's come out here is the Eight of Cups. There are definitely could be some things that you need to walk away from. But I, what I'm hearing with that is set yourself free, especially in terms of ways that you have been caught up in terms of your family life, how it is you were loved and nurtured as a child or maybe lack thereof. Really, you got to let that go. You got to let that you you have to you have to walk away from that. You have to release yourself from that because really, you guys, you're the ones holding yourselves back if you're still caught up in it. Now, I understand if it's still hurting you, but in order for yourself to no longer be hurt by it, you've got to face it and focus on it so you can walk away from it. OK, here you are. The next card out is uh, the Knight of Wands, Sagittarius energy. Um, focus on you. OK, the encouragement here is to really focus on you, focus on yourself and how you can heal so that you can change this energy for yourself. All right. Justice is the overall energy at the bottom of the deck, bringing you great levels of balance and harmony, but you've got to let go of, you got to step out of your comfort zone, the nine of cups and leave that sense of apathy behind because it's really only going to be of service to you in the end. Forget about the other people. Okay. Forgiveness. We say this all the time, but forgiveness is for you, Sagittarius. So instead of holding yourself here in this apathetic, I don't want to move forward because I'm in a comfort its own energy draw on that energy of the mars being in taurus to break you free and get you set up onto some really beautiful long-term goals that could absolutely change your life all right saggy my Sag Metazicals. I'm going to leave it there. I really want to say, you guys, I'm so proud of you. I love you, Sagittarius. You guys are one of my favorite energies, so I'm really, really happy to be able to bring this beautiful message to you. But with that said, I hope you have a fantastic month. Definitely smash that like button for me. Leave me a comment in the comment section down below, letting me know how this resonates for you. And also subscribe for more beautiful messages for you and more guidance from the universe for you. And as always, if you are interested in any type of session with me, whether that be a natal chart analysis, maybe some astrological pr uh, um, predictions, and also just general energy readings from the tarot and the oracle cards, shoot me an email. My email can be found in the description box below, letting me know you're interested, and I will be more than pleased as punch to get you all hooked up. With that said, Saji, I hope you have a fantastic month, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading very, very soon. Yes? Excellent. Bye. <laughs>